good morning, good afternoon, or whatever time it is for you guys. It's also like 12.31 here. I went skateboarding for a little bit, and then I just finished doing a walk. But yeah. Get me a skate. Where did I put it? Oh, I know where I put it. Uh, I got this on Saturday. This vegan face spa mask for like only a dollar. Um, it's vitamin E sheet mask. From Claire's, I got this cool headband. It's a little deer, like a deer antlers. And this was actually on clearance for like five, but then I guess they were just trying to get rid of it, so it was on. It came like to one cent, so I was like, okay, why not? They also had this gold one, but it wasn't on clearance. I think it was like twelve ninety nine. Yeah, it was like twelve ninety nine. So like thirteen dollars. And it was cute. It actually had like the antlers as like gold glitter. But I was like thirteen dollars. I don't know. And then I seen this, and then I was like, okay, I'll get that. And there was only two of them. One of them was like bent. I don't know if somebody dropped it or what. I don't know. But they got one that was not as bent, so I got this one for my cosplay. They also had these little like gem, little stick on gem things, but they wasn't on clearance, but I can get those like anytime. And then there's this like cool choker necklace. And I thought this was like pretty indifferent too. Uh, I didn't get this from the waterfront clearance because they didn't have it. So, and I've been in that store twice and they didn't have what I was looking for. So. I guess every clears is different, but I thought about this. I was like, okay, this is a good for cosplay. So at least it's still a dare frame that I want it, but, it, and it's not like Halloween or Christmas Eve. It's like, like a regular nature dare, but it's different. It's pretty, um, I could do a lot with black. So yeah. I got this on uh, Saturday. So. And I'm just trying to think ahead because it's much easier to do it that way than trying to find stuff last minute and then I don't have stuff I'm looking for. So. And then the one, the mall I went, most of their stores was like, was like cleaned out. For our 21, looked like it was cleaned out. The lady looked like she was just trying to put more uh, shirts out and stuff. I said, they just been cleaning these stores out. Or they don't got enough on stock or something. I was like, what is going on? So, yeah. And then when you go to other different malls, they have like, so if you're like in Forever 21, they have like sections and rows full of like stuff. But if you go to your normal one, well, at least I know how ours is, it's like so empty. It's crazy. So. But it was still fun just to look. And plus my mission was trying to get a um some type of deer ant. Why my camera like that? They're antlers. So, yeah. Because I know the makeup is going to be easy. It's just the fact that I just was looking for their antlers. So, yeah. And try to, like, create my own costume little thing for cosplay. 
so and I got like so many ideas but yeah but yeah it was so nice out this morning so I was like I'm gonna go skateboard I didn't even eat breakfast it's actually late for breakfast I'm actually gonna try to get ready to eat something so that was still my period too so my stomach is like hurting here and here so yeah Oh, this is just what my hair looks like without it being a uh what is that a pineapple but yeah so nothing really that fancy plus i just wanted a different look because i was like i'm sick of like the same old same old like you know i'm gonna put this back real quick And I'm about to do some laundry real fast, too. Looks like this is all my sleep undies, so that should be pretty easy. But yeah, happy Monday, guys. I can't believe it's Monday again. I just can't wait for this month to be over. Like, I feel like April has been a long month. Like, ugh. But yes, yeah, some of um, the games I just been screen recording just so you guys can see it. So it's much easier than just showing y'all my phone back and forth. So that's why I've been screen recording too for certain games. Yeah, they can hear my neighbor too. <laughs> I have you next door. I'm not even good at neighbors. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the top drawer. On. Yeah, in the top drawer. Wait. I think there's room. Yeah, there's room. Reach. Oh, excuse me, that was gross. Must have been little hiccups or something. Oh, that was it. Okay, good. Oh yeah, and here's my phone too. I thought I left it, might have left it downstairs. Yeah, I did like 7,622 steps. So, and that's just for now. Cause it's nice to get the fresh air in the morning and skateboard and Walk the trail. Plus, I wanted to take it easy. No, I'm not as sore anymore. 
but I'm trying to be like extra careful because I always trip on like the my board always trips on like the um cracks in the basketball court. So he like fell once today, so I just took it easy. And plus I'm on my period too, so I'm just trying to like take everything easy. So yeah. Oh, I know what I wanted to show y'all. See if I can find it. Okay, so they have Pennywise at the Clown Doll. And she is on Macquarie for $198. So I'm like, she's still like new, part of the new um, collection. So she's still like up there within the price. Her and um, Gaga, Zombie Gaga. So yeah. Here's your Lady Gaga, but yeah. Um, I want to get her down the line. Um, what else? I'm gonna get her, Gia. No, that's another one. I'm gonna get her. And her. But I say more so the cheapest ones first. They're like, I don't know, lowest price. So, yeah. Uh, I got a lot of offers that people made, too. Yeah. It was noisy. Jeez. Oh, wait. I don't think I have to search it. Let me see. Dang. They must be cutting the grass. This is getting louder. Jeez. Okay, so this video is only like, or yeah, is this a video? Yeah, this is a video. It's only like 12 minutes and 50 seconds. So we're going to listen to this. Not just for me, but for Hemi as well. Oftentimes on the weekend. Let me start it over. It's supposed to be something horror, let's say. Three disabilities. Uh, I take true my dog, dog walker twice a day. Let him story. in the yard once. When I take him for a walk around the neighborhood, I always try to take different routes just to keep it from getting repetitive, not just for me, but for Hemi as well. Oftentimes on the weekends, I take him for longer walks since I have more free time and I don't have the stress of other work related things still lingering in my mind. On a cloudy, humid Saturday oh. evening, it was one oh. of those times that I decided to take him on a long walk. I'm talking like almost an hour. We were in a part of the neighborhood I wasn't too familiar with. I found a walking trail that was part of the town's huge nature preserve. Oh yeah, I got it this was a cool rather bracelet too. Path. There didn't seem to be any other people on it but it's me. From my dad. It was a rather narrow path with woods on either side. It wasn't a cement bike path like the other trails in the preserve. Hemi led the way, pulling the leash harder than usual, probably excited by all the new random smells he was picking up. Eventually on the trail, we passed this little square park. It had a swing set and little playground. 
along with a basketball court, or rather what was once a basketball court, as there were no hoops. I decided to walk in through the little opening, as Hemi was going crazy over something. I was planning on just sitting on one of the benches facing the playground to take a break because I was getting a little tired. But when I sat down, Hemi kept pulling and started barking at something. He'd only really do that when he saw another dog or animal. Sometimes people, but less often. So I entertained it and got up and started giving him slack to run towards whatever he thought he saw. I looked into the woods but couldn't see anything. The closer we got, the more aggressive Hemi got, until he was basically choking himself with the collar, trying to pull me into the woods. Then out popped a man from behind a big tree. He was laughing and saying, whoa, whoa, he caught me. I told Hemi to calm down and pulled him away from the woods. And the man. I apologized for my dog and walked away, as the way in which he came out from that tree was bizarre. He said, it's all good, dude, as he seemed to follow in the direction we were walking. Hemi kept looking back and barking. I continued to tug him forward. Eventually, I had to turn around and ask if there was something I could help him with, as he even seemed to follow me outside of the park and onto the trail. He put his arms up in the air and smiled, and he said he just wants to pet my dog. I said, nah, he doesn't like you, man. We're just going to walk our own way. He didn't reply, so I turned and continued walking, faster now. Hemi kept turning around and growling, and every time I'd look back, he'd be the same distance away from me. Kind of off the trail a bit, half hiding behind the trees like he thought he was being slick. I was about to call back at him to piss off, but then it hit me this guy might be dangerous. I started running down the trail, until I came to the little opening we entered from, and exited through that. Back on the streets, Hemi would keep looking back as we ran, but I'd have to tug him to keep running. We ran all the way back to my house without stopping. I actually do cardio regularly, so I wasn't concerned about that guy keeping up. I highly doubted it. Especially since Hemi stopped looking back eventually. It was now a couple hours after getting right back. Hemi was in his bed, which was right next to mine, when he unexpectedly lifted his head to look at the window and growled. At first, I thought it was because of the sound of the rain droplets that had just begun to hit the outside of the window. And I was thinking about getting up out of bed to close the window, even though I was already comfortable in bed. Then it happened. A voice speaking into the window, a voice I recognized from a few hours ago, asking if I knew why he was in the woods. Hemi started going crazy. I jumped in my skin and turned to the window. I couldn't see his features or face, but I could see the outline of his body at my window. I yelled, what do you want? He calmly asked if I saw what he was doing in the woods. I told him no, and he asked me, are you sure? I said yes with a tremble in my voice. He said okay. I saw the outline of his body move away from the window. Hemi stopped growling after a few moments. I closed the window and latched it. I wouldn't have been able to sleep that night without calling the police. I told them I was followed by someone in the park and that he came to my window. The dispatcher asked if the man left and I told her to my knowledge, yes. She said if you were to come back to call 911 again. She implied it was All a right. busy night since it was All a right. Saturday. I did feel comfort knowing Hemi would give me a warning at least if he were to come back. He didn't end up coming back though, thank God. The man's words, did you see what I was doing in the park, still don't really make sense to me. I wonder if you were implying he was doing something he didn't want others to see, and that he was worried I witnessed it, but that alone would raise even more questions. Hmm. Okay, this is the second story. It was a regular night in the summer of 2010. I was taking my dog Poppy out for his nighttime walk. I usually take the same route. Sometimes I'll stray down one different block. Not always, though. This one night, I branched off a familiar block to a not-so-familiar one. All that I knew of this block was that there was an abandoned house on the corner. It's known as the murder house. I've only ever passed it while driving. The first time I saw it, I slowed down just because it's such an eyesore, sticking out like a sore thumb from the rest of the houses. I never could understand why the town wouldn't just tear it down and build a new home, especially given the house's history. The reason no one ever bought it was because of the murder of a young woman inside, potentially by her boyfriend. He was never to be heard of again. No body, no signs of leaving, nothing. Walking down the block, I saw the house slowly getting closer. I already planned on stopping in front of it to take a look, but Poppy actually stopped before I even did and just looked at the house. I could tell by his ears and his head tilting that he was engaged by something. 
I looked around the neighboring houses, which were spaced out generously. And our neighborhood has a lot of green, meaning tons of bushes and trees lining the streets. Plus, it was as dark as could get out, and the house was conveniently situated in a gap between the streetlights. It didn't seem like any of the neighbors could possibly be watching me from where I was. So I started walking onto the grass of the property, but Poppy stayed in place. He started to growl and make whimpering type sounds, like he was frustrated. I pulled him hard enough, and he started to follow onto the property. He was fixated on a window that was opened. I stepped onto the house. Length front wooden deck and this. walked so to the window. Like, Poppy was still making growling and whimpering sounds. I pressed my face up to the screen of the window. Surprised the window was even left open. I started to wonder if maybe someone was still managing this house in some way. Whatever that would even mean. Inside the house was dark, but not pitch black. I could see the walls to the empty living room. And then the opening in the wall that led to a back room with another window. As I was observing, I heard the sound of something inside the house, like a blunt object hitting the floor. It came from further back in the house, like in that back room. Having my dog with me gave me some kind of weird confidence boost to go through the side of the backyard. Mm. The backyard was literally huge. The grass was very tall, indicating I was likely wrong about any kind of property management. Only thing in the big yard was an old, wooden, decrepit-looking shed in the corner. The door to it was slightly open. I was more curious about looking in through that window. As I looked inside, I couldn't see anything except an empty black room. Probably what was once a mud room. Poppy was looking at the shed, not barking or growling though. He was kind of silent. I walked quietly towards the shed, tugging him slowly and softly to keep him quiet too. The door was open enough for me to look inside the giant shed. It was not empty. There weren't tools or bicycles or anything. There was just this skinny girl standing in the middle of the otherwise empty shed. I say girl, but I couldn't tell if it was just a girl or a woman. Mm. Poppy suddenly went ballistic, barking and making these noises I could only describe as a dog's version of screaming. He wasn't pulling to go inside of the shed, he was pulling to get away. The girl's head inside the shed turned to the door and I ran. We ran. Poppy and I ran for three straight blocks until I was out of breath. Then we walked the rest of the nice way back to my house. Her. I went to a house nicknamed Murder House, where a young woman was killed potentially by her boyfriend. And then oh. I witnessed a young woman standing in the middle of that empty shed. I don't know if I believe it was an apparition, or just some girl by chance trying to explore that abandoned house just like me. Hmm. That one was good, too. You can't They're do both better than Bear Pro. I-300 or E-600. Our field... Okay. <laughs> it's about wall paint. <laughs> A wall paint commercial. I was 10 when my parents let my brothers and I get our first dog. I'm the middle sibling, and it was always my older brother and I's job to walk the dog. Our dog's name was Nyla. Ooh, Nyla was that's a, a nice retriever. name, too. My brother would walk her in the afternoon after school, and I would walk her at night. I don't remember Ooh. anything about what kind of night it was. Cold, warm, weeknight, weekends, nothing. All the details I remember are what I'm including in my recounting of this experience. I was like halfway through my walk with Nyla when she looked across the street Ooh, and her tail started her? wagging. She's a pretty. She started um, barking and tugging that? to go say a hi to this dog that was being walked by a man Receiver? across the street. Yeah. The man made the decision to go both of us to cross the street and allow our dogs to say hi. His dog was a very tiny, fluffy dog. I think it might have been a Maltese. His dog seemed very timid and like he didn't want to be bothered by Nyla. The man asked my name and I gave it to him and he told me his name. I don't remember it, honestly. But we got into this long conversation yeah. about our dogs. He really seemed to like Nyla, and Nyla kind of liked him. He was telling me how his golden retriever Ooh. had recently oh, passed away, and he had a bunch of my toys and dog supplies too. that he'd love to give me. I figured, why not? It's my lucky day. He said his house was around the block, so he led the way. I was walking kind of next to him, though, as we walked. All right, I'm going to heat up my We were in the street the rest of the way back, so but the residential that. roads are usually quiet. After kind of awkwardly walking back to his house, he let me in first. His house was okay, modest, nothing special. He led Nyla and I into the kitchen as he let his dog go run off into a different room. He asked me to have a seat on one of the stools by the island in the kitchen and asked if I wanted anything to eat. He offered me a bag of chips and I accepted it. He handed me a bag of some off-brand potato chips. Then he just sat on the stool next to mine and started petting Nyla. He was awfully close to me. 
And then he looked down at the bag of chips, I think, as if he were waiting for me to open it. I put it on the island in front of me. He just sat there petting Nyla, not saying much. I was wondering when he was going to get the dog supplies he promised. He didn't show any signs of doing that, though. Instead, he was asking me personal questions, making awkward small talk with me. At one point, I remember he even patted my knee as if he were my father or something. I remember an overwhelming feeling of discomfort suddenly. So I finally asked about the collar, toys, and other supplies he mentioned. He said he'd be right back and go get it. He said it, not them. I remember picking up on that. He left through one of the two doorways in the kitchen. Then I heard him stomping downstairs to the basement. Moments later, I heard him call up to me to come downstairs and check out some of the stuff he wanted to give me. I got up just to walk over to the basement door, still deciding if I'd want to go down. But then Nyla started growling at something behind the open basement door. I looked. There was someone crouched down in the dark hallway. I didn't really know what to think, but I just left the house in a hurry. I got home and didn't say anything to my family. I just went to my room the rest of the night, quiet and shooken up. It was the first and only time I ever felt I was about to be targeted for being a young age. My only explanation was there were two men in that house, and the second I'd walk into that basement, the other would have shut the door on me. I didn't tell any of my family about it simply because it made me uncomfortable and honestly slightly embarrassed. Telling the internet anonymously is completely different. It's time for bigger goals, and Duquesne's 90 graduate programs can help you get there. Learn from world-renowned teacher scholars on a park-like campus in the heart of Pittsburgh. Expand your horizons. We'll show you how. None of us could have prepared for the challenges we are facing today. As a company, Duquesne Light has adapted and continues to assist our customers in every possible way. In these difficult times, it's important to make sure they know resources are available now if they need support. With our online Here to Help Resource Center, we've made it easier to find payment assistance, energy saving tools, and more in one convenient place. It's those little things that separate Duquesne Light's customer experience apart from the rest.
Okay, guys, I'm back. Oh, did our video go off? <laughs> so, thought you guys. Oh, it is. It's over. Okay. Well, I'm back now. But yeah, um, different. I'm gonna do lots of different cosplays that it can be like easy make where I don't have to do like a whole lot and just like get the outfit together and like everything. Um, yeah, and you guys will see before and after. Like I said, I'm gonna be a brat doll. Um, yes, man, so you guys will see before and after for that and at the event, everything. And Comic Con is next month. Um, but the 22nd to the 23rd of May, and then June 11th, June 12th, and June 13th. So, yeah. But you guys will definitely see before, after, and in the events and everything. So, yeah. And I'm eating this mac and cheese, but I thought you guys just wanted to listen to that. Um, and, yeah. Hopefully, when this pandemic is, like, over, I'll get to visit California because there's so much you could do in California. That's, like, my goal. And, yeah. And I also found out that I have family out there, too. So, yeah. I just, like, good schools out there and everything, too. Um, yeah, the ocean and everything. Think I'm trying to figure out the name of this one video we can listen to. Okay, here's one. This might be too long, but we can, like, listen to some of it. Since we haven't listened to scary stories in a while, I thought we could just... This is Peacock. Listen to it. Why is it so loud? Jesus. It's a bitch. I don't even got the headphones in. was about 14. Oh, yeah, and it's going to be hot tomorrow, so that's why I got all in skateboard and what drill and stuff because the breeze felt so nice so yeah okay okay it's starting and we're just gonna listen to it this happened when i was about 14 i had just Maybe started babysitting for this family in my neighborhood they had two kids, a boy who was this 10 at the time is, um, and a girl Cheeto, who at the time was cheese, eight. They were great kids to babysit. Japingo. They got along with each other without fighting and always did what I asked of them without complaining. Before I launched into what happened, good. I'm going to give you all some background everything. information about this family's house so you can understand because why I, miss I was so freaked out. Well, when I but woke I up, I wasn't like far hungry. Back in my neighborhood so, on this little side street off of the main road at all. that runs the neighborhood. The house is in the cul-de-sac, like so there's not a lot of traffic on this road at all. Usually, the only people that ever come into the cul-de-sac are the mailman and people who lived in the other three houses that were in the cul-de-sac. The street itself was not very long at all, so there were only three houses on each side of the street that weren't in the cul-de-sac. Essentially, despite being in a large neighborhood, the street that this house was situated on was very quiet. And if you didn't but live in the neighborhood, like the, you might not it? know that the street existed. Mysterious it was a fall spell. Friday night. I'm pretty sure it was late November, right after Thanksgiving. The and I had story, arrived I'll at the do house around 6 p.m. The, the kids the were already story, sitting down and eating dinner when I got there. Like and the parents story told me that they expected to be home like around those. midnight or so. 
better. The parents also made a joke about how the kids had the whole street to themselves. I'll be a lot doing a lot of different stuff, that lived there so were out of town probably for not listening on my channel. The parents left, the kids finished eating, and we went outside to play in the cul-de-sac. I remember locking the front door and taking the house key outside with me. The kids rode around on their scooters for about an hour. For some reason, I just felt really on edge while the kids were playing outside. Mm. I chalked this feeling up to knowing that we were alone on the streets since everyone else was out of town. After and the, the kids finished playing outside, is really we nice went inside too. to play Wii in the basement. I'm just saying. I remember locking the front door once we were back inside and putting the key on the kitchen counter. I then checked mm, the front beautiful. door before I went downstairs to the this basement. Is. I was super vigilant it's about beautiful. checking the doors because well, the I watched been, so I many say. scary movies where the babysitter forgets to lock the door. And then some crazy murderer gets into the house. Blah, blah, blah. As mm. the kids are playing in the basement, I get that unsettling feeling again. Look, he got a nice like we basement. Were being watched. It was more like when you know that something is going to pop out in a scary movie, and you're just anticipating it on the edge of your seat, with tension at its highest. The feeling sticks with me the entire time that we're in the basement. But again, I chalk it up to the knowing that the entire street is empty. The clock strikes 10 and it's time for the kids to head to bed. We go to the top floor of the house where the kids' bedrooms are. The house is set up so that when you open the front house. door of the Jesus. house and come inside, you're standing in the foyer with the steps to go to the top floor directly in front of you. If you're standing in the foyer, you can see all the way up the stairs into the bathroom and on the top floor. So the kids are in the bathroom brushing their teeth and we all hear a car pull into their driveway. I figured that it's their parents coming home super early, and I expect to hear the garage door start opening. But that sound never comes. I walk into the girl's bedroom and look out her front window. There's a car running in the driveway, and there's a man in the car. But the headlights are turned off despite it being 10 p.m., and it's pitch black dark outside. Mm. I figured it was someone who just got lost in our neighborhood and was just though? using the oh, driveway wow. to stop and get their bearings before heading back out on the road. Even I'm not outside. I leave the girl's bedroom and head back to the bathroom where the late. kids are. Suddenly, I hear a knock on the front door. I turn around and there's a man standing at the door holding a pizza box. Okay. There are two long windows on either side of their front door, so I have a clear view of this guy, and I know that he has a clear view of us. I immediately get that eerie feeling that I had been feeling all night. I asked both of the kids if they ordered a pizza for some reason, and they both said no. These kids were always very honest and wouldn't lie about something like that, or even order a pizza without asking me, so I knew they were being truthful. Normally I would have gone downstairs to see what this guy wanted. Maybe he had the wrong house and I could point him in the right direction, but that little voice in my head was screaming, don't go downstairs. Do not open that door. Yeah, for real. And the guy also looked like he didn't work for any pizza company. Yeah, he just got to Normally show up at your house. they would be wearing a uniform or a hat with the company's logo on it. Or <clears> something. <throat> this guy just seemed off. He looked like he was in his Ew. late 30s, maybe early 40s, and looked super disheveled. His shirt was really wrinkled. His pants were filthy and ripped. And he had this ratty black baseball cap that was pulled down super far so that his eyes were covered. He was also grinning really aggressively. Ew. Like I thought this guy's teeth would just shatter because of how hard he was pressing them together. It's weird. At this point, the kids notice him and start asking why he's here. Should we open the door, etc., etc. I tell them no and ask that they just go to their rooms and lie down. The boy goes to his room. And I walk the girl into her room and look out the window at the car again. I notice that the car doesn't have one of those pizza delivery car signs on the top, which all of the pizza companies in my town require delivery drivers to have. So now I feel really confident in my initial intuition that this guy isn't a legit pizza delivery guy. Nope. The girl gets in bed, and I come back out of her room and sit down at the top of the stairs so that I can keep an eye on this guy. I tried to stay really calm so as not to upset the kids, even though I was flipping out on the inside. Oh, there's two. He's still standing at the oh. door holding the pizza box in <clears> one hand, and he's still grinning that teeth-shattering grin. His That's mouth weird. was almost too big for his face, I thought. Even though I can't see his eyes because of the hat, I know that he's dead-ass staring at me. Then, 
Without breaking eye contact, he starts jiggling the door handle oh. pretty aggressively while still grinning. Turn off the lights. I silently thank God that I was so psychotic about making sure the front door was locked. He stops jiggling the handle and resumes staring at me. If I was in the situation now, I probably would have called the police immediately. But being only 14 and fairly new to babysitting, I was paralyzed with fear. I felt like if I took my eyes off of him for a second, when I looked back, he would be standing at the base of the stairs. After about another five minutes of the stare mom. down, he literally starts walking backwards off of the porch without breaking eye contact. Legit, this dude is walking backwards towards his car while still staring at me. I go into the parents' bedroom, which also has a view of the driveway, kneel down in front of the window and peek out. I'm expecting to see this guy getting into his car. Nope. The guy is nowhere in sight, hmm. but the car is still there. So That's I return weird. to my perch at the top of the stairs, half expecting to see him at the door again, or worse, standing at the bottom of the stairs. But he was nowhere to be seen. After about 20 minutes, I hear a car starting. I run back to the parents' room, kneel in front of the window again, and notice that the car in the driveway has started, and the guy is sitting in the driver's seat, still fucking grinning. He also doesn't turn the headlights on. He shifts into reverse and begins slowly backing out of the driveway, grinning the entire time. Ew. Right before he drives off, he turns his head, and I swear to God, makes direct eye contact with me again. And again, I can't see his eyes because of the hat, but I know that he was looking directly at me. This is really disturbing to me since he didn't really know where I was in the house. The parents' bedroom is in the farthest window to the right if you're looking at the house from outside. Mm. The lights in the parents' bedroom are off, and I'm kneeling down. So really, the only part of me that might potentially be visible is the top of my head, my eyes, and my nose. But it's also pitch black outside. He doesn't have his headlights on, and it's pitch black in the parents' bedroom, so I doubt that I was really visible. He also didn't spend time scanning the windows. His head literally just snapped to where I was. It was like he could sense that I was looking at him. After I had time to calm down and collect myself, I started replaying what had just happened and came to the following conclusions. This guy was not a pizza delivery guy. Nope. He had no uniform, looked and acted like he was possessed or something, and his car was unmarked. Mm. Those 20 minutes or so that elapsed between when he walked backwards off of the porch to when he got into the car were probably spent walking around the house and checking all of the doors, trying to gain entry. He had malicious intent. Maybe he wanted to rob the house. Maybe he wanted to do something more sinister to me or the kids. Either way, this guy was bad news, and I'm glad I trusted the voice in my head. I think he probably found some pizza box and tried to pose as a pizza delivery guy to get me to open the door for him so that he could strike. There are still some parts of the story that are confusing me. If he really wanted to get inside the house, why didn't he find a rock, a brick, or something else to throw through the window? I mean, I'm very glad that he didn't, but I just thought it was a bit odd that he checked the doorknobs and then gave up after he discovered that they were all locked. Maybe he felt like doing something that made a lot of noise that would alert me, and so he could try to sneak in in a more subtle way to catch me off guard. Why did he walk backwards off the porch? Was it just to preserve eye contact Whoa. and thus intimidate me? Excuse me? Or was this dude just insane? Why did I feel so unsettled early on in the evening before this guy even showed up? Was he watching the house and waiting for the kids to go to bed and for me to be off guard before trying to get into the house? Maybe. How did he know where to look when he was backing out of the driveway? Why was he grinning the entire time? Did he know that our house was the only house on the street that was inhabited at that time? Why did he pick that house, especially given the fact that it's on a very quiet and secluded street and you have to drive pretty far to the back of the neighborhood to even reach the street? He could have picked the 50 or other so houses that you have to pass to even get to that house. The town where I live is upper middle class and has a super low crime rate, and drugs aren't really an issue. We're also surrounded by other similar upper middle class areas, so I'm doubtful that this person was on drugs or some crazy vagrant. 
Of course, I could be wrong. Maybe this dude was just jacked up on drugs. Mm. Maybe he was just a vagrant dude. Maybe he really was just a lost pizza delivery man with some unsettling personal quirks. But <clears throat> he don't look I'm like really one. Really doubtful. Okay, so that was like the other one. There's like two one here. It goes up to like twenty minutes. We're not gonna listen all day. But yeah, I thought you guys wanted to hear something scary since we haven't listened to anything scary since. I don't know, last Halloween. So, yeah. Um, I'm not really doing much. So, yeah. But I just wanted just to show you guys what I got from the mall so y'all can see that. And know how stuff is coming along and yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm not doing a whole lot because I am on my period, so yeah. But yeah, it's supposed to be like 81 degrees tomorrow. So, yeah. This weather is so weird. It goes from being really, really hot to the point that you're sweating to really, really cold that you have a hoodie on like this. Then it goes comfy, which is not too bad. Then it just keeps going on and off, on and off, on and off. It's, like, not really stable yet. And it's probably going to be like this in May, too. Because, um... June, it probably will stay hot, but then we might get a lot of rain. So, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll get a lot of rain next month, though. So, yeah. The pandemic, the water just been weird lately. Like, very, 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 very weird. So, yeah. But, yeah, I can't wait to do my first cosplay and then be at Comic-Con. That would be fun. Because, um... I never went to Comic Con at the waterfront, so that would be fun. Plus, I'm cosplaying at the same time, but that would be fun. And that one is actually free for two days. If I go around 12, which I probably will because I want to go in for free, then June, I already been have uh, the barcode ticket for that. So, yeah. Because, um, yeah. Man, I'm gonna make my own costumes, either out of outfits or whatever I have, and try to take it from there. Unless I like find something that's like a reasonable price, because I'm trying to see if I can find like a purplish or lavender skirt that won't be like so expensive. But I might just see what I have in like my closet first, more than anything. So yeah. Yeah, we don't gotta listen to the whole thing. But yeah. But yeah, I'm also gonna try to record what is it called? Blood Kisses. It's also a game old story thing that's actually on my iPad. So I'm gonna try to record that. So y'all can see that since you guys really like um Mysterious Magic Spell. Nicole part one. I'm just going to do more of those since you guys really like those. So, yeah. Because y'all view those um more. So, yeah. Um, I might want to try the game called, I think it's called Warcraft. But it sounds like it was made for PlayStation though. So, I have to like read up on that and actually see. So, oh, your hair is zombie gaga, but yeah. That's two hundred and eighty. That's really expensive, dude. I 
and say this is what I'm selling on my page now. This is first bra that is really well. It's clean. I just don't want it no more. And it's kind of too small for me. I like Spurs Brawls Dash Out Custom Numb, so that's definitely why. And then this set. Party Secret set. And I got views on this Ferris on here, too. But yeah, and that's pretty much all I'm doing. So yeah, but um, just stay subscribed and you guys will see different videos popping up out of nowhere. Um, like I said, cosplay and stuff is probably not going to happen until next month when I'm getting ready to go to Comic Con, Waterfront, and then of course in June. And then Kingwood's getting ready to open up too. But I'm probably going to try to go maybe May 14th if the weather is okay. And, yeah. So, yeah. But I thought since we haven't heard scary stories since, I believe it's since last Halloween. Which was last year. So, I was like, okay, let's listen to some type of scary story. So, we listened to the one before, the last one, and then that one. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know what I was going to say. Let me see if I can find it first. Do -do 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 -do. But yeah, I'm going to keep on finding different games too for um, every Friday too because Friday is game day. So, yeah. Oh, I also want to try this. Because um, they sell this pretty cheap at, what is it, uh, Hot Topics. And this doesn't um, damage your hair or nothing. Um, I'm trying to think what it's called. Oh, it's a semi, I think, or a semi, I think I'm saying around right now, semi perm, which means it's not really a perm. It only lasts like for a couple months and then your hair goes back to its color so it's not like really a perm perm um dye or whatever so yeah and i watched a lot of youtubers and um it looked nice in their hair and they had like the same close to the same hair texture color as mine and yeah and they said it's nice and they put it on her kids hair and everything and it doesn't damage and everything. And then I asked the lady in the store. She said, yeah, she use it. And she says, um, no, it doesn't um, damage your hair or nothing. And oh, yeah. And then plus it's vegan. So it's really good. So, yeah. And she said after like a few weeks it comes out. So, yeah. I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, and also, you can also do it, I think, two ways. You can either mix it in with your shampoo that you um, use for your hair. Or you can put it on dry. And then, of course, follow the steps and let it sit and all that. So, okay, that's cool. At least it won't um, damage your hair or nothing, so that's cool. And plus, I've seen a lot of other, like I said, black YouTubers that used it and everything. And I've seen nothing but good reviews about it, which is really, really good. So,
And I was like, okay, well, Hot Topics is the cheapest, so. Uh, I don't know what I want to try. I don't know. Maybe Dawn Line. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and my sticker on my mo controller is trying to peel off. So I'm trying to tap it down because it's trying to peel off for some reason. I only put it on here because I want to make sure I can find my mo control because I got like a lot of black in here. Black dresser, black bookshelf. Yeah, a lot of black. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, guys, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you guys a couple things and talk about a couple things. And yeah, and I did I already show you guys my new comic books? I think I already did. No, I didn't show you guys my free comic books. I don't think. No, I don't think I did. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I have this one that I already read. This one, I finished reading that. And then, I think I'm on the... Oh yeah, I actually am on the next story. So I only finished the first little short little story. Okay. So there's actually two stories and one. So yeah, and it says free comic books a day, but I got, literally grabbed three. The last time I was at the waterfront because I was like, okay, why not? And it's free. I said free comic books at the comic book store. Yep, I'll take that. <laughs> so I got um Archie, Blue, Raven, Parents. I don't know why it says that, but okay. It's Riverdale. Let's just say Riverdale because it is just Riverdale. And then we have this. And it looks like it says Halloween Comic Fest. I guess the label. And yeah, and then we have this one and this one. I finished reading this story. I need to finish reading this story. But it was like free comic books. You can't really go wrong with that. That's cool. Really cool. So, and I guess they're just doing it for all the spring and summer this so I guess people can just read all ages. You know what I mean? So yeah. I really, really like these. Um I need to finish reading the second story. But they're all really, really good. The um the drawings of it are really, really nice. Like colors are amazing. So yeah. I like that. I like free stuff. But yeah, anyways. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys Thursday. Okay, bye.